we have a frame of reference. And we're going to call that frame of reference right now S. And S is a stationary frame of reference. Pardon the interruption. This is final call for any students that need to have a makeup photo done or any staff, please go to the drama room, room 130. So S, the reference frame, is stationary with respect to Earth. A is a moving particle. And we can identify the location of A with a vector R. So R is the position vector that identifies where that moving particle is with respect to S, our stationary reference frame with respect to Earth. We are also going to describe the location of our moving particle with a different reference frame, S prime. S prime is moving at V naught, which is a constant velocity with respect to the Earth. So we can describe the location of our moving particle with a position vector r prime. Oops, r prime. So we can describe the location of this moving particle with two different um, vectors, r and r prime, r for the one that is with respect to the stationary reference frame, s, and r prime, which is with respect to the moving reference frame. Uh, this is delta x, the distance between our two reference frames. Now notice, v naught is the velocity of our moving reference frame. It's a constant velocity. So remember, v naught is the constant velocity of our reference frame s prime. So v naught is equal to the displacement over time. Well, this is our displacement. So we can rearrange this to get that the delta x, the displacement, is equal to v naught times delta t. So this side of the triangle is not just delta x, but it's also v naught times delta t. So the velocity of our um, constant ref or of our moving reference frame multiplied by the change in time, however much time goes by. Now, we are going to set t initial equal to zero so that delta x is equal to v naught times t, such that t final just becomes t and because t initial is equal to zero. Just to make sure everybody understands, s is moving at blank with respect to S prime. Just checking it, make sure we understand. Who can tell me? S, the stationary reference frame, is moving at what velocity with respect to S prime? Heather? Close. Negative v naught. Because it's moving in the opposite direction if you look at it from with respect to our moving reference frame. So S is moving at a negative v naught velocity with respect to S prime. Good. So let's look at this right here. You should be able to see that our vector r is equal to r prime plus delta x. Well, delta x is equal to v naught times t, so r is equal to r prime plus v naught times t. One and a half boxes. I think we'll make it to October. R equals R prime plus V naught times T. Good luck. So then we can rearrange this to get that R prime is equal to R minus V naught times T. <laughs> this is a meeting. You weren't invited. I wasn't either. 
It's okay, they'll, they'll come back. Okay, so we have, I just rearranged the equation for r prime. r prime is equal to r minus v naught times t. Now, I'm going to take the derivative of this whole equation with respect to time. So we're going to have the derivative of r prime with respect to time is equal to the derivative of r with respect to time minus the derivative of the quantity v naught times t. What is the derivative of r prime with respect to time? Mike. Sorry. We're just starting on the far left here. What's this expression, the derivative of r prime with respect to time? Velocity. That is going to be velocity prime. What is the derivative of r with respect to time? And what is Velocity. Minus the derivative of v naught times t. What is the derivative of v naught times t with respect to time? All right. That, that's okay. You're not seeing it. Help her out. Who can tell me what it is? Look. Acceleration. It's actually not acceleration. Um, sure. It's v naught. Remember, v naught is a constant velocity. This is just a number. 12 meters per second, something like that. So this is like saying 12t. What's the derivative of 12t with respect to time? It's just going to be 12. So the derivative of this is just v naught. Okay. So let's make sure we understand what these are. v naught is the velocity of our particle A with respect to the S prime frame. Right? So the velocity of this particle with respect to the moving reference frame, we defined as v prime. That means v is the velocity of a with respect to our particle with respect to the s frame. And you can see that they are not the same. v prime is not equal v, it's v prime is equal to v minus the velocity of the reference frame, which makes sense. They're not going to be exactly the same. OK. Well, let's take the derivative one more time. Let's take the derivative of the oops, the derivative of the whole equation, v prime minus v minus v naught. So let's take a look at what this is going to be. Derivative of v prime with respect to time. Um, acceleration. Acceleration prime. prime. So that is the acceleration of um, particle A with respect to S prime frame. Okay. What about the dv dt? M? Um, would that just be uh, velocity? Derivative velocity with respect to time. Oh, um, I'll, I'll go back. Going the wrong direction. Hold on, hold on. I'm holding. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm She's not seeing it. Help her out, Justin. Is it acceleration? Just acceleration. Now, it's not acceleration prime, but rather just acceleration. In other words, this acceleration prime is the acceleration of our particle with respect to S prime frame, but our acceleration here is the acceleration with of our particle A with respect to the S frame, the stationary frame. So this is with respect to the moving frame, this is the acceleration with respect to the stationary frame. Minus dv naught dt. Fleming. Is it acceleration naught? It's not acceleration naught. It's fun to say. But is it zero? Zero, right? Because remember, v naught is just a number. This is the derivative of 12, again, with respect to time, which is just zero. In other words, the acceleration is the same, which is the whole point of this exercise. That regardless of how our frame of reference is moving, as long as it's moving at a constant velocity, we will measure the same acceleration. We won't measure the same velocity, but we will measure the same acceleration. This is what is called an inertial reference frame. So 
if, I'll put it right here, lost space. If the acceleration of our reference frame is equal to zero, it is called an inertial reference frame. Yeah. What that means is in an inertial reference frame, all of the accelerations will be measured the same, no matter how that reference frame is moving, because it's moving at a constant velocity, which we just proved. If the acceleration of our reference frame does not equal zero, it is called a non-inertial reference frame. Today's desktop picture is a picture taken on July 4th. This is of Janine holding a fire sparkle. This is an inertial reference frame. What you're going to look at here is a kid rolling a ball. Mmm, kid rolling ball. Now, this is an inertial reference frame because if merry-go-round, which he's on, is not moving. So you would get the motion of the ball as you would expect it to be, right? It's going to move straight. But if instead what we do is we set the merry-go-round in motion, what happens here is that we are no longer in an inertial reference frame. We are in a non-inertial reference frame. And we're going to get something that looks like this. Rather than the ball moving straight in our non-inertial reference frame, it is going to actually accelerate to the right. Because it's a non-inertial reference frame. The acceleration of the reference frame is not equal to zero. Right now, are you in an inertial reference frame or a non-inertial reference frame? In other words, is your acceleration equal to zero, or is your acceleration not equal to zero? Carlo. Um, say inertial. So your acceleration, just to be clear, is equal to? Zero. Right now, is your acceleration equal to zero? Sam. question. Okay. Let's talk about it with respect to the Earth. Right? Are you, is your acceleration equal to zero with respect to the Earth? Can you uh, Well, the Earth is spinning, so I guess it's not. Are you right now moving at a constant velocity? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. No. Rebecca? No. Oh, is it because your acceleration is Ah, that's the acceleration of gravity, which is slightly different, okay? But right now, you are moving in a very large circle, right? Turns out you right now have a centripetal acceleration, which is inward towards the center of the circle. It turns out it's a very small centripetal acceleration if we do it with respect to the Earth, right? So we do treat this as an inertial reference frame because it's pretty close, but it's not quite. If we do it instead relative to, say, the center of the solar system, things get very complicated because we're actually moving in all sorts of different directions there. So we usually do it with respect to the Earth, and we do say we are in what's close enough to an inertial reference frame. We say the acceleration is pretty close to zero, so it works out fine. But realize, you're not quite in an inertial reference frame. 